Hey everyone, welcome to New Way Health Podcast, where we explore topics to enrich your total well being. Uh, mm-hmm. Today, we're actually diving into the topic of mindfulness. I'm really excited about this. I'm Jennifer Gilman, I'm the owner of New Way Health Coach, and I have with me Coach Emily Abshar. It's like Coach Supremo, right? <laughs> he works with so many of our clients. And honestly, I'm just going to, I'm just going to just give you a cheer here because just yesterday, two of your clients said to me, they're like, this is amazing. I can't even tell you how much Emily has helped me, but we've gone into areas that I never even thought we'd go to, you know, Mm -hmm. I thank you. And I want to celebrate you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me here. (laughs) Absolutely. So before we dive in, because we're really going to go deep, you guys, um, I am curious, Coach Emily, when um, when you knew we were going to talk about mindfulness mm-hmm. today, I'm just curious off the top of your head, like what what you're most excited about with this topic? Oh, it comes at a perfect timing. It reminds me to pay attention on purpose mm-hmm. in the moment. Yes on purpose and in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So hang on to those words that she just said, you guys, <laughs> because I'm going to tell, tell you a little bit about like, what is the definition of mindfulness? Cause I think it's important for us to kind of slide back a little bit, not dive right into techniques, but rather what is the definition of mindfulness? Because there could be confusion around that. I know I hear that a lot, right? Do you the same thing? They're like, what is mindfulness? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to define it. And and when I look to the left here, it's because I wrote down things. So this is really the definition, you guys. (laughs) So mindfulness is the practice of being fully present and engaged in the moment. Notice Coach Emily just talked about the moment. Without judgment, it involves paying attention to your thoughts, feelings, and surroundings. So I'm going to repeat that one more time so it can kind of sink in and resonate Mindfulness is the practice of being fully present and engaged in the moment without judgment. It involves paying attention to your thoughts, feelings, and surroundings. And then there's two core principles that kind of crop this up and they are awareness and acceptance. So awareness would be noticing what's happening in the present moment and acceptance of embracing your thoughts and feelings without criticism. There's that judgment again. Um, so how does that make you feel like as you've coached many people, um, do you resonate with that definition, Emily? Oh, yes. And, you know, I find it hard, even with that definition, why is it so hard for us to wrap our mind around that? Yeah. And I think that's the big thing is like, when you say the word mindfulness, and I've been, you know, corporations. And I just talked to another person the other day. They're like, we want to hire you to talk about mindfulness. So this word is definitely trending, but there's so much overwhelm and confusion around it. Cause you're like, what does that look like for me in my day? And that's where we hope to bridge that today with you. And I think by the end of our time, you're going to start to understand some little things that you can do, but it's not just one day or a week or a month or a year. This is something you have to practice. Oh, that do you, would you agree then that there's no wrong necessarily way to start practicing mindfulness? Like, can I do it wrong? Right. That's what comes to my mind. I love that. You're like myth busting right away. I love it. (laughs) Right. So it's like debunking that myth of it has to look this way. And you're right. I mean, I totally agree with you. It's like, it's really finding your groove. And that's something we do a lot. So those of you listening that work with us, you're like, yeah, we know that because you're like helping us figure out our success formula, what works for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I encourage you guys to really think about as you're listening today is like, it doesn't need to look a certain way. What actually works for you and just trying things out, being willing to like experiment. Right. Oh, the freedom in that. Yeah. Experimenting. Yeah freedom. Okay. So, so before we give you some techniques right around this, I want to talk about the benefits Mm -hmm. because if you don't, you know, really resonate with like, well, what's, what's in it for me here? Why is this even important? Mm -hmm. You might have thought about it and you're hearing the buzzword, but truly what is in it for me? So there's four pillars here, right? 
The first is the benefit of mental health. The second is physical health, cognitive benefits, and social benefits. Mm -hmm. So let's camp on mental health a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. With mindfulness, um, what do you think could be a mental benefit, Emily? Mm. Uh, to pause that autopilot. Um, whether that's sabotaging my my day or my moment or my hour, how I respond, it allows me to take control of that moment if I if I worked on it mentally, pausing. And how would that like how would that make you feel, do you think, when people or when you do it or some of the clients do that? Um asking myself questions. Yeah pausing um how like mentally is this a place where i want to go do i want to camp here long mm. so choice is, feeling choices mm -hmm. i'm hearing oh yeah 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 that mm. that choice point that i have i don't have to be an autopilot to choose something or to respond to a certain way mm -hmm. but i do have a choice if yeah. I just took a moment to pause mentally, you know, we talk about telomeres. Yes. I'm constantly talking to clients about growing the telomeres. And why is just, that important? Because, <laughs> because, because those, we, some listening were like, tell a what, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's just like going to the gym, right? You're working out those tiny muscles in your arms. You're breaking down the fibers. And every time you go to the gym and you work out that muscle, it builds more and more muscle. Mm -hmm. And it's just the same thing with mindfulness, with the mental capacity to pause. You have a choice point and you're working out that telomere. You're constantly growing that telomere wherever you want it to go. If you want it to serve you well mm -hmm. or not serve you well, building that muscle mentally mm -hmm. to choose what may be the harder choice right. at that moment. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty powerful. So really it's like you're you're taking ownership of yourself there. So mentally that can reduce your stress and anxiety, right? Around mm -hmm. decisions because now you really see that it's your choice. It helps manage depress depression. So when you do mindfulness, it definitely is a direct relation to managing depression. So we're talked about three big ones right off the bat, stress, anxiety, depression. So this is proven mindfulness helps with this. And then um, emotional regulation and resilience. So those are the mental areas that, you know, evidence-based, if we really, and you, we, we do the same thing as like always working on mindfulness as we continue to do this. And if you decide to venture in this area too, that's what's going to happen. Those are some benefits just mentally in that one little category. Now I want to jump to cognitive because you, Emily, brought in some of the cognitive benefits too, and um, you know, building the telomeres and the long, that relates to longevity of life as well. So, with cognitive benefits, you know, this is something that definitely is proven to help with focus, focus and concentration. And how many people have you coached that bring that up? That they're just like, I feel scattered, like. Oh, yeah. tell, tell me some of the things that they tell you around their mind that they just want to feel better around their cognition. Yeah. Especially they use that word, um, brain fog. Yeah. Right. Um, the lethargy, the tiredness or can't focus or can't recall memory, like can't recall words. Um, it's all tied together with yeah. this, this mindfulness. And again, I, I love that word. I love the idea of autopilot. We do so many things in autopilot and we're not really mindful of what we're doing because it just comes so quickly and so natural to us. But if we could just pause for a moment mm -hmm. and really work through, I, I just coached a client this week um, and it was about leaning into the hard and it's cognitive, right? We have a temptation or we have a desire, but we know it's not going to serve us well. And so we practice mindfulness and we, we pause and we lean into that 
the thing that's hard. Yeah. Being and, super and aware, which was one of the first aware. things we talked about is that's one of the core principles, awareness. And, 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 and how that opens up brain clarity. Yep. Yeah. So this it, is, it, I'm glad you mentioned brain fog because that's like the number one word or phrase that people say, brain fog, and brain, brain fog, I need to get rid of it. I want to get rid of it. I don't know how everything I'm trying is not working. So we do talk about a lot of things, nutrition and everything related to that, but mindfulness is key. Taking yourself off autopilot. I love that. Yeah. So yeah, cognition benefits are huge and increases memory. Then if you're able to do this now, all of a sudden you're enhancing your memory and the cognitive flexibility. So that's important. Oh, so let's quickly dive into physical health benefits of working mm. on mindfulness. Mm. Um, heart health, oh. right? Like Lung what helps deep breathing, right? Deep breathing. Yeah. yeah. The, the, we go back to the stress. Mm -hmm. to decrease, um, tap into that vagus nerve, tap into that, the HPA axis. And like, yeah. oh, if I could just breathe right now, how transformative is that? And how will people sleep? Uh, more soundly. Yeah. That's another big one. We're always hearing most people do have difficulty sleeping. And I have too in the past and throughout life. Like, I think I've got it all set. And then all of a sudden something happens in life and I'm not sleeping again. So it's time to bring in the mindfulness deeper for me. Mm -hmm. So um, neither of us are immune to any of this. We've done this work before and we continue to do it. So it's like, if you could just get a good night's sleep. And so doing this mindful work helps with um, improved sleep quality. Right before bedtime? Or is that what you're... That practice Not of really mind. like this, but even throughout the day, you know, being able to be more mindful throughout your day. Um, and yeah, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, once we dive into some techniques you can use, then you can choose, do I want to do that at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, again, you get to choose. So <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> so that really course, nice. you're saying like the mindfulness practice that we do throughout the day tapping into um, that parasympathetic state, calming ourselves so we're not so stressed. Yeah. So our cortisol is not so high all day long. Um, that affects how we sleep. Absolutely. And so if we can calm ourselves more and own it, right, we're, we're becoming owners of our health. health. And when, when we talk about mindfulness as one of those tools, it's this is a tool that we use throughout the day to decrease stress so we yeah. can go to bed more peacefully our liver's not exhausted yes yeah <laughs> from all that cortisol you know, you're the liver expert so emily just finished a liver detox with a group they just like had amazing results so so yeah so physical lowers blood pressure improves mm -hmm. improves sleep quality and then boosts the immune system response so that's really great the last benefit i want to talk about that sometimes uh, people will skim over is the social benefits so how does this improve relationships with the mm. communication that you have and the empathy that you might have because of mindfulness. So how do you, uh, I'm curious if you have any like examples of that, of how that has shown up for any clients you've worked with. And of course, everything we do with clients is confidential. So we just share in a general term, um, but curious, like, do you have any stories that pop into mind for yourself or clients around that? Oh man, it's all tainted. I find when we, we talk about that social skill around mindfulness, it's tainted with what we think others think about us. Mm, yeah. And I, I, the definition that you said in the very beginning, it's a no judgmental zone when you're being practicing mindfulness and think about all the times you're with other people and you're constantly thinking about what they think about you, right. the judgment that happens between the, the conversation and if I just practice mindfulness and embracing, this is a no judgmental zone. Yes. Yeah. I love just that. Be... <sighs> just noticing, but not going that step further that we normally do is like, we immediately notice and judge, notice and judge. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just like cut it off right there. Forget the judge part, just notice and move on. You know, that's it. And that, that allows us to be like your definition in the moment. Yes, in the moment. Uh, yeah. And how many times have we had conversations with loved ones that we love dearly? 
and that we were looking forward to. And then it's so fleeting. And then it's like, did I even enjoy that conversation? I mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've had conversations with clients. I've done this myself too, is like, you might be around people because you're stressed out and you say things that you really like later on, you're like, oh my gosh, that was pretty harsh. Why did I do that? I don't even recognize myself. Right now, imagine you're practicing mindfulness on a regular basis, how much compassion you will have for others in your conversations and the tone of your words, how different it is. So it really is very different in both scenarios, you know, um, but that's the, like the anecdote, right. Is yeah. practicing more mindfulness is key for all of these things, mental health, physical cognition, and social connections. So a lot of really good benefits. Do you, real fast, Jen, do you, um, when, cause you know, when we coach, mm -hmm. it's not just about, um, health and wellness and food and movement. Yeah. It's about creating an identity of how you want to show up. And when we practice mindfulness before we get into a social situation and I've coached a client, it's coming to my mind right now, it's being pausing for that moment, being in that moment. And how do I want to show up mm -hmm. for myself Yeah, yeah. in this event yeah. for others? I love that. And one, a tool that I, I kind of drug out earlier today with a client is, um, I had asked, is it time to revisit your core values, you know? Um, and he actually said, he's like, well, I know what they are, but you know what? I haven't relooked, I haven't looked at them in a while. And I said, honestly, me, I look at my values every year because I'm like, I work on myself, personal development. So they could shift and change based on the ebb and flow of life. Um, so yeah, being able to be mindful, but matching it up with, well, what is my purpose? What's my why, right? If you don't yeah. know your values first and do that work of identifying your values, which you get to choose, right? Mm -hmm. And now you have something, a metric to stand that up to of like, okay, am I, am I in alignment with my values? Does that serve me this new thing that maybe somebody presented an opportunity for me? Does it match up or does it not, you know? So yeah, I, yeah, there's so many tools we have, right. That we can help people to be like, well, why is this mindfulness stuff important? Mm -hmm. How do I measure my success around it? Yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. So it's time to get to techniques, right? So a lot of people are we're like, well, tell me how to get started. How do I start this mindfulness stuff? So well, we're going to go over five things um, in our time together. We have, there's loads of others. So certainly reach out to us if you want to learn more, but we're going to go over um, just some quick, like breathing techniques. Um, that's one of the options, body scan meditation, a mindful eating, mindful walking and daily mindfulness and what that actually means. So breathing techniques, what's your favorite one that you like to do? <sighs> the one that I don't have to really think about really just saying, Emily take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's that, that simple. There's it, no it, counting, right? No counting. There's no counting. <laughs> it, literally just taking a deep breath. I think I probably do it like three times. Mm -hmm. It takes what, maybe 45, 50 seconds, but that's realistic to me. I do it multiple times throughout the day. Take deep breaths. Yeah. That's all I say to myself is take deep breaths. Simple, simple. And breath is free, right? It's nothing you have to buy, you know, no equipment, anything like that. Next time at your, you're at a stoplight, instead of reaching for the phone to check yet another text, do deep, deep breathing, three, three deep breaths. Or maybe you get, what, in. what do you think about when you do your deep breaths? Um, I actually just, uh, pause and just relax. Like mindfulness to me is like be in the present moment. So I really do think present moment. Those are my kind of words. Yeah. It helps me. It does exactly what it's saying present moment. Right. Um, yeah. but I do similar during the day. I just try to do some soft belly breathing, not counting at all, yeah. but my favorite nighttime one, do you want to know what it is? Go for it. I love the four, seven, eight breath work at night. Oh, I don't yeah. know what it is about it, but for years I've been doing that and I'll do it when I'm, as soon as I lay down, actually, it's easier for me to do. And I'll breathe in through the nose for four, hold at the top for seven and breathe out through my mouth for eight. And I don't even need to do many, like three or four reps of that. Mm -hmm. It just settles my body down for a good night's sleep. So 
I no learned problem. that from Dr. Andrew, Andrew Weil like years ago and I like four, seven, eight. So you guys, yeah, it's that. powerful. <laughs> yeah. So that's just some breath work, but I encourage you to try different ones out because we just mentioned a couple of simple things, but there's gosh, there's Wim Hof, there's mm-hmm. breath of fire, there's alternating nostril breathing. There's so much. And we have our phones to just like quickly, you know, search for different ways. So get curious, you know, and try that out. So let's move on to the body scan meditation. And this is really a guided practice. We actually have a handout on this of where you start to um, work on from the top of the head to the, to the toes or vice versa. And you actually, um, you know, just kind of squeeze that area or just tense up a little bit and then you release it. So little by little, you're releasing, you're tensing and releasing from head to toe or vice versa. And now then when you're finished, you can kind of notice where is there still discomfort or tension? So that's another area of like, how can I be mindful about how my body is feeling? There could be a lot of reasons. So um, one person that went through the cleanse, he was explaining the first couple of days, there was intense heat in his abdomen. He was sweating Mm -hmm. profusely and he had amazing results. You know, by the end of it, he had lost like 11 pounds and all this, uh, you know, just amazing, amazing. But isn't that interesting? Like doing that body scan to notice what is going on here with my digestive system. It really needed this cleanse, you know, tremendous heat and sweating going on. So those are the things we're like, why is this? Is it physical, emotional, you know, what's, what's happening there, but have you had any interesting experiences around the body scan? Yes. It's a very stressful time and it's really personal, but I'll tell you the moment my, my adopted son from Haiti decided to drop out of high school Mm. as a mother. That was so sad. Yeah, but he struggled. He didn't get here until he was like eight and he didn't get to America until he was eight. And I remember purposely laying on the ground and scanning. I was so stressed, you know, so heartbroken for him. Um, And I remember on the grass, grounding myself on the ground outside, nothing between me and the grass and doing that body scan. Mm -hmm. I just, it was part of that, um, you know, you can't control your 18 year olds. Well, you can't control any of your kids. <laughs> yeah, best. can't control anybody really, except for ourselves, right? It's a good <laughs> reminder. <laughs> Especially 18 year olds. Yes. And I remember grounding myself on that grass, laying down mm-hmm. and going through every single inch of my body. And I was really trying to release that control I had for my, my high school or, you know, my kid. Yeah. But I, man, and I, I didn't want to get up. It yeah. was powerful and it transformative and it changed my relationship with my kid mm. after I, I did that every inch of my body releasing just all the tension, but really releasing mm-hmm. what I had, you know, with my kid that I was trying yeah. to hold on to. So it's so interesting that how you did that exercise and then you're sharing like it totally changed probably the conversation you then had with him afterwards is that right yeah wow i mean from mindfulness you guys are you hearing this (laughs) like it it is profound and i plugged in the forgiveness part when I was grounding myself and I was mindful and I was releasing all that tension in my body that was you know pent up Yeah. I topped it along with the forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. And whatever those listening, whatever your spirituality is, is being able to have a belief and a faith and call upon, you know, for me, it's God is like, God can please help me through this type of thing. And I think that's another thing of just, you know, bringing your spirituality along with your mindfulness is just going to really enhance your practice. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of my one of my favorite moments. So mindful eating is another technique. And this is the one a lot of people have heard about. And they'll hear mm. this is the one I hear all the time. I don't know if it's the same as for you, but they're like, take 20 minutes to eat an apple. Have you heard of that one? 
<laughs> no. That is so an hard. Apple? <laughs> yes. And you're like 20 minutes for an apple. <laughs> so for years I've heard this and I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, it's, that is not, I have to be honest, that is not for me. Okay. But for me, it is the way I started with the eating is I first just put the fork down in between bites. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. And that was huge because I kind of grew up in a family. We just sort of ate quickly, I guess, right? You just sort of eat and maybe like get as much food in as possible type of thing. Um, that's that's how I was brought up kind of thing. So anyway, fast forward, I'm realizing I was having digestive upset. It's like over time, when you eat fast mm -hmm. like that, you are going to have digestive problems. And doctors will be like, everything's fine. And all you had to switch out was eating slowly. So ironically, this ended up happening with my daughter early on. And we were able, because I had had my experience, I said, I want you to slow down with your eating and voila, she was fine. Just that's by time. Powerful. But yeah, so that's just one simple way for anyone to begin the mindful eating practices, truly just putting the fork down in between every bite. Then you're more apt to chew more thoroughly, you know, and your food will digest. But what ideas do you have for mindful eating? Well, it's appropriate timing because when you do the detox, you know, we just got done with the detox mm -hmm. and you take that first bite after you've been fasting for two and a half days and appreciating the flavors that are in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It, yeah. And, you know, like what you said, we rush, rush, rush. But if you can actually appreciate that red pepper and that green pepper or that that burst of flavor that comes with that food. And, you know, when you fast, it's much more robust because it's you've been lacking food. But yeah. the appreciation of all of those flavors that that food allows you to enjoy. Yeah, you know, the other mindfulness practice that is uh, really beneficial is calming down like before you eat. And I, I, during the detox, I always say, you know, that's why people say grace. We, or that's why they, you know, they pause or say whatever they want to say to con get into that state of mm -hmm. I'm eating now, get all my blood rushed to my gut. Like you're saying to help with the breaking down and assimilation of that food, but yeah, being so grateful for this food because not that's, everyone has that. Yeah. Food. And that's something that's been done for thousands mm -hmm. of years. So I really appreciate that you brought that up because that was another technique I started early on is actually open eye praying over my food of just actually looking mm -hmm. at it and eating with my eyes first, but being yeah. able to say, thank you for all of the hands that made this food and the mm -hmm. earth that grew this, you know, um, this nourishing food that I'm about to eat. I'm grateful for it. So when you do that immediately now, you're, you're not going to quickly pick up a fork and start yeah. eating. There's just no way it doesn't happen. When you do some mm -hmm. kind of prayer, you will slow down right from the beginning. As long yeah. as it's intentional, of course, if you're just saying it to say it, it's, you know, that's different. But mm -hmm. so that is a great way to like, if you stack this habit onto the eating of actually saying a prayer or a blessing or whatever form that takes for you most likely you're going to have success in beginning to eat slowly, but yeah. Which is the flip side, Jen, right? Um, how do you practice my mindfulness or with your clients when it comes to grazing and snacking all day long? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> that is, that's something that I'm not a big fan of. It's it truly, I feel like we need that rest digest period. So yeah we do talk a lot about meal timing and allowing your, your body that time to actually digest, because if you're constantly putting food in it, no matter what quantity, then your digestive system is always working and that's hard on your body. So, so really making that choice to take a break, take a break yeah. in between, you know, most of the time, it's not always the case. It's because they're hungry again. So we have to look at like, are they getting enough protein and healthy fats mm. to keep them satiated, you know? So looking at what they're eating, when they're eating, the whole meal timing thing is just as important as looking at, you know, the actual foods, but yeah. yeah. Do you find, I'm curious if you find similar things or. Oh yeah. That the autopilot, 
back to, yeah. Going to that pantry. Yeah. We need to fire that whole word. You know, it's like no more autopilot. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Rid of it. It's not good. Just like multitasking. Not good. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, but I'm really good at multitasking. Yeah. And you're like, no, that's Uh, not a good thing. That's not a good thing. (laughs) um, I was going to say, when I, I've made it a, a practice when I put my hand on, when I feel those pantry handles, mm-hmm. like when I, I, I'm mindful, I pause and that I'm, I'm in that moment when I put my hands on those pantry handles and I'm like, mm-hmm. do I really need something out of this yes. pantry? Yeah. Just being mindful that I touch the handles and I'm about to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you plan and prepare ahead of time, you know, if you say, yes, I'm going to have um, some kind of a small, healthy dessert after dinner, and then you do that, but then after that, you're done and you go brush your teeth. Well, then you just sort of stick with that. It is preparation and planning is a really big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. We've got two more things I wanted to chat about is mindful walking and then daily mindfulness in general. So mindful walking. Oh my gosh. I just have to share with you that. Early on, I've always been a walker, but I don't know, this is probably 20 years ago. All of a sudden I started walking and I'm like, I feel like I'm meditating. It was their strangest thing. And I don't know. It was like, there was signs around me completely like I'm meditating, but I'm walking. Is that a thing? (laughs) So I had not heard about this. Nobody ever talked about this. So I started researching. I'm like, it is a thing. (laughs) So you can Mm -hmm walk in a meditative way. And ever since then I tell people, I'm like, you don't have to sit and do OM, you know, uh, or meditating. It could be eyes open meditating and enjoying Mm -hmm. nature around you and the beauty, you know, it could be looking at the ocean in stillness. It could be sitting on the grass, um, laying with your dog on the grass, you know, quiet moments are meditative, but walking, mm-hmm. I stumbled upon early on in life is that that was meditative for me when I didn't go fast. Of course, I was just sort of walking along, feeling good and looking around me and noticing things. So I do mm-hmm. encourage you guys, if meditation oh, yeah. is difficult for you, try out this mindful walking thing, you know, and just notice everything in your environment, not just what you see, but the noises, um, there was a woman recently, she shared, she's like, I realized I love the sound of birds. And I don't know why I didn't hear them all these years until now. And when she said that, I was like, wow, like she now hears the birds and now she's getting curious about birding, you know, like finding out about these types of birds and never in her life had she ever been interested in that. Oh, Jen, you, um, I just learned the word, the word, and I can't remember it now. I probably text my, but when we, when you walk, what you're saying is you're meditating and or running, it's our peripheral. Something happens with our vision, with the things that are going by us. Okay. There's a word for a scientific I'm, word for it. Huh. And that our eyes like start appreciating the things that are passing us by. Interesting. Oh my gosh. I don't know what that word is. So if it comes to you, just shout it out. <laughs> okay. I Well, it's a scientific, like they studied it. Like why do people appreciate and calm down when we're walking, going forward? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so try it out. Uh, you guys. We'd love to hear from you. If you try any of these out and just uh, like, give us a shout out and be like, that worked for me, you know, now daily mindfulness in general. So we talked about breath work, body scan, mindful eating, mindful walking. So daily mindfulness is integrating mindfulness in daily routines, like mindful listening um, during a conversation is a great idea. Mindful activities like washing dishes or preparing your food. So one I wanted to share, and this is from a good friend of mine early on, she said, she goes, I love cutting vegetables. And I was just like, that's not my favorite thing. <laughs> But she gave me a new appreciation because she shared her story with me. She goes, I just, I think about those vegetables and like, again, the hands that actually planted the seed and grew them and pulled them and was able to bring it to my table or to the grocery store. And so she said, I think about that actually when I'm slicing the carrots or peeling, you know, the cucumber or whatever it is, she loves it. It's very, she does it in such a mindful way. So what helped me to start being more mindful with my cooking was having some music on. 
because I didn't, I was struggling getting there, to be honest. I was like, I was trying to be mindful um, until I brought music in. I wasn't having much success. As soon as I put music on, which I do now all the time, I'm able to relax and enjoy the preparation of my meals. So I just want to share that with you guys. Maybe you'll try that out. But what works for you with some of these other like mindful um, daily routines or just maybe mundane tasks that you can all of a sudden turn into mindfulness? I learned it from my mom. I was um, at my wits end. I have boys and Legos years ago. They're older now, but in my, I said, mom, what did you, how did you do it with all of us kids? And she said, every time you pick up the dirty sock or the clothes or the toys around your house, you, you say thank you for them and you thank them and you tell yourself, they're not always going to be here. And one day you're going to miss picking up these dirty socks. (gasps) That's powerful. (laughs) informative I was like I'm going to do this so now every time I pick up my kids bath towel or dirty socks I thank the Lord that I God is you know who I think and I thank him that I have somebody to pick up after and that one day I'm gonna miss picking up these socks yeah that's such a good reminder and those of you listening who can resonate because you have older children now you totally get this and if you don't yet hopefully this will inspire you of like, oh my gosh, yeah, they are growing up so fast already. And I know at some point I'm going to miss this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, It's helped me. Yeah. That is so good. But yeah, just think about stuff like that. So I, I want to wrap things up for us and kind of close out, but I just really encourage you listening to explore and discover opportunities for yourself. Try things out. Don't feel like I have to do this or I should do this. Do it because you want to and use your curiosity around it so that you're like an explorer figuring out what works for you and other things you'll be like, nope, that didn't work for me. Just like when I said, I tried to be mindful about those carrots cutting them, but it wasn't, it wasn't until I added the music that it actually started working for me. Uh, But yeah, share your experiences with us. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say to kind of wrap up uh, before we close out, Emily? Mm -hmm. No, I just practicing mindfulness really puts you in a place of um, more of an optimistic place, a positive place. Uh, uh, So time doesn't just go by. Yeah. Yeah. Slows down. So if you liked this, um, what you've heard today, definitely subscribe to the channel and share it with somebody else. I think that's the biggest thing is share this episode with somebody who you feel could benefit from this. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. Bye for now. Thank you.